Hosanna in the highest. As we now enter into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his sufferings, death, and burial, and resurrection, let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings of the day. Good morning. Good morning. The servant of the Lord expresses absolute confidence in his final vindication, despite the fact that he has been struck and spit upon. The characteristic of the servant played an important role in the early church's understanding of the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. A reading from Isaiah, the 50th chapter. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Paul uses an early Christian hymn to help us comprehend Jesus' obedient selflessness on the cross and how God has made Christ Lord over all reality. The perspective of the cross becomes the way we rightly understand God, Christ, our own lives, and fellowship within the community of Christ. A reading from Philippians, the second chapter. <coughs> Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard, regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself. Taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. And thanks to God. God. Not to have been born. 
Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day, when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me? one hour. Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples 
and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now, the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father? And he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen? in this way. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, he has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? 
You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasure, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the thirty pieces of silver the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. <clears throat> then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not 
even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews.
Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. 
the next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. May the preacher decrease that we might increase in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hosanna is how we started today. This word does not mean glory, praise, or victory. It does not mean arrival, or completion, or fulfillment, and it does not mean the end of Lent. It means, save us. Save us, the crowd shouts. Save us, we shout. The cry is not aimed at the leader of an army, or the king of a nation, or a foretold magical sword-wielding hero. Save us. Shouted at a man on a donkey, a man whose supporters are the poorest and least equipped people imaginable. Save us. Save who? From what? Save us, the crowd says. The default would be to identify their pleas with the platitudes about sin and repentance those assumptions we always insert into ambiguous Bible verses. Or perhaps we might think about the fear and pain and death that stalk every one of us. Perhaps we even connect this cry to the pain of Mary and Martha and the loss of loved ones of which we heard last week, though that is a different gospel and a different story. Perhaps we mean ourselves, our family, our country, our church, our world, even. But this crowd has a very specific threat in mind. Say who, from what? Save us is the cry of the oppressed, a political cry. This is an occupied, disenfranchised people who are in the process of being systematically erased from existence. 
They have been in the process of being erased for 700 years. They are struggling to survive and to find a way to be who they are without being killed or starved to death. Save us! The Jews of Jerusalem cry out to Jesus. So how do we hear it today? Save who? From what? Save us! Cry out the oppressed of all of human history. We need only look to our own continent. The genocide of the indigenous peoples, the enslavement and chattel slavery of peoples of African descent, the erasure and silencing of women, the exclusion of Asian and Latinx peoples, the rejection of the lives of the LGBTQ plus community, the children who have marched in the streets begging for someone to save them, and more their peers and their younger siblings from the plague of mass shootings. And the trans community, especially them, especially now, mere days after the Transgender gender Day of Visibility. And all those categories might seem rather abstract to some of you. We might still think, save who? From what? Save us, Mommy. say Rebecca and Jamie Brusehoff. You want specifics? Here they are. Jamie is begging for her life and the life of her husband, Chris, and her daughter, Rebecca. And if you don't know who they are, Chris is a Lutheran pastor in this synod. And Rebecca is his child, with Jamie. She's nearly an adult now. She was raised in this synod. Some of us have met her. They are Lutherans who live in this community. They are begging for action, begging that their lives might be saved. Saved from what? You may ask. From the consequences of statements like these, and I quote, Christianity and transgender orthodoxy are wholly incompatible theologies. They can never be reconciled. They are on a collision course with each other. One side is likely to draw blood before the other side. Save us, indeed. I will not go on today, partially in interest of time, about this misrepresentation of Christianity as the rejection of identity being able to be changed, as though baptism were not somehow a new identity, according to no less than Paul in the letter to the Romans. Instead, let's look at this theme. Who needs to be saved from what? Who's in power? Who is begging to be loved, respected, protected, surrounded in a community of care? Who is oppressed and who is oppressor? Because it was quite clear to the crowds that shouted Hosanna. And I hope it is quite clear to us. Save us from the side that is using crosses to kill people. Save who? From what? Save us. Save us from the ones, from being the ones who put people on crosses. Save us from being the ones who use violence to solve our problems, to erase those with whom we disagree. Save us from the powers seeking to, to take away who we are seeking to crush our people, to make us hate and fear more than we love and trust. Save us from scarcity, from an inability to live in community. Save us from our inhumanity. 
Save us from those who use the name of God to tell us who to exclude, oppress, deny, hate, and kill. Save us. Save us. Even us who are descended from and profiting from, perhaps even still saying, His blood be on us and on our children. Save us who have been trapped in evil, who now see the blood on our hands that only forgiveness can wash away. Save us who have sinned by passing judgment. Save us who have been taught to judge, condemn, and kill. Save us, O oh Jesus, from the powers that murder and seek to make us murderers. Save us, O oh Jesus, by making the blood of our guilt and evil into the mark of those you came to save. Save us, O oh Jesus, from crucifying you and our siblings, especially our transgender siblings, those for whom you died. Amen.
Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. Save your church, O oh God. Enable us to boldly confess in every time and place that Jesus Christ is Lord. With the humility of a servant, equip congregations, synods, and other ministry settings to proclaim your extravagant love for all, especially St. Mark in Oakland, Faith in Hillsboro, Good Shepherd in Little Egg Harbor, the Texas Louisiana Gulf Coast Synod, and the Peruvian Evangelical Lutheran Church. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save your creation, O God. Every living being you have made has purpose. Give us renewed appreciation for the farm animals who labor in the field, service animals who accompany their human companions, and beloved pets who live alongside us. Merciful God, save the peoples of the earth, O God. Restore dignity to those who are scorned and persecuted persecuted for their religious beliefs or political activism, and deliver them from the hand of their enemies. Bring peace to places where conflict runs deeply, especially Turkey, Syria, Ukraine, Iran, Israel, and here in the United States of America. Merciful God, save those who cry to you in any need, O oh God. Watch over all who are incarcerated or awaiting trial and stand with those who are unjustly accused. Be present with those feeling isolated, lonely, or fearful, especially all our guests in the Women's Hospitality Network, the people of Turkey and Syria, the people of Nashville, the people of Mississippi, the Montanaro family, Kelly, Catherine, Kurt, AJ, Connie, Paul, Linda, Sydney, Cynthia, Dave, Sarah, Stan, Tammy, Elfrey, Richard, John, Bob, Leah, Bob, Nancy, Stephen, Mark, Bonnie, and Charlie. Merciful God, save us in your love, O oh God. Guide us, guide up the work of church musicians, pastors, choirs, leaders, deacons, technicians, acolytes, and all who assist in worship. Sustain them in their leadership as they accompany congregations through this holy week. Merciful God, save us at the last, O oh God. We give you thanks for your saints of old who embodied your servant love, especially Richard, Madison, Dorothy, Nancy, Peter, Eileen, Edwin, Avis, Benedict the African, Albert Durer, Matthias Grunwald, Lucas Grenach, and Dietrich Bonhoeffer. As you came to their aid, so deliver us in times of trial, that every knee would bend in praise to you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you, all of us. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign with each other of Christ's peace. I made it good for another 50 years now. Your friends, I invite you to be seated at this time. Just a few brief things about our worship service and our offering today. If you would like to help this ministry move forward, we are looking for leaders in worship and on church council. We are looking for help with a variety of tasks for volunteers with our social ministry programs, and you can speak with Diane Bravo for more on that. And we are always looking also for fiscal assistance so that we can keep the lights on. If you'd like to make a contribution in that way, there is a chest in the of the name. You can mail us a check at our street address. You can use the Banco app or use Banco to set up a direct deposit from your bank account. A note about communion. Communion will be distributed from the front of the baptismal font. Uh, there will be bread, which will be placed into your hand. There will be one chalice for the divinity, 
and one for drinking. The chalice for drinking will be closer to me, the pastor. So the bread, then drinking, then dipping, or bread, drinking, then dipping. Okay? Over here in our uh, uh, cross alcove, there will be a minister who will be available for anointing and prayer for healing for any who desire it during the distribution of communion. All who are baptized in Christ Jesus are welcome at this table if they desire. If you do not wish to come forward or are not and do not wish to be baptized, you may come forward for a blessing. And uh, the usher will give you direction. Now, let us pray together our invitation to giving prayer. God, prepare us to give, to give today, today to each, each other, other and to you. Give us boldness so we might ask our neighbors what they truly need. Give, give us humility so we might, might listen to their answers. Give, give us patience to tolerate disappointment and freely forgiveness to grow. Give us generosity so others can benefit from the money and food and other things that the world tells us to keep to ourselves. Give us abundance so no one ever leaves here hungry. Amen. Let us sing our offertory as the gifts are presented and the table is made ready.
Dear friends, I invite you to stand as you are able for our prayer after the communion. On the cross, Jesus confronted our misery and carried our guilt, carried our death to his grave, but all still breathe, all still weep, and all still die. Let us pray. Do not turn your face from us, O God. You hear us when we pray. Raise the dying, O Jesus, and heal all the sick. Comfort the restless, O Holy Spirit, and share your welcome with the wandering. Forgive us for our sins. Take our death to your grave, so dying we might live. Hear us, O God. Our mercy is great. A few brief announcements before the blessing. Immediately following worship, 
there will be a conversation about life together. For all those who might have questions or want to join in that conversation, interested visitors, people who would like to be members, new members, council members, people who have been here for a hundred years, people who got here last week, pastors, everyone. So please join us for that conversation. It's very casual and should last no more than the hour of fellowship. That is called Back by the Living Together, and it's been announced for several weeks. Notice that there is a packing party scheduled for the second Sunday of Easter, that is April 16th, which means, of course, that next Sunday is the Resurrection. And between now and then are a bevy of Holy Week invitations. This Holy Week we're partnering with Trinity Episcopal Church, which is across the park. If you need details about that schedule, see your newsletter or speak with me. But the long and short is, every night at 7 p.m., something is happening over there, and I'll be there for all of it. I'm preaching some of it, presiding some of it, and just being at some of it. So I invite you to join us, however you are able and so called. Are there other announcements? For oh, one more. I have received word that Sydney Shepherd, the youngest daughter of Steve Shepherd, who has been battling cancer for some time now, has been declared cancer free. Thanks, <laughs> She's only 20, so this is a huge victory, and we give thanks to God for that, and we pray for human cities continued healing and continued abundant life. Are there other announcements for the community? Yes? On Sunday the 16th, after worship, we're having lunch, and then following lunch, there's an I Support the Girls packing party. Um, we will be packing feminine products, and it's lots of fun. This will be our, our third one. Um, so please join us uh, in any way that you can. If you want to just come for lunch, just come for lunch. Thank you for the further details about the packing party. I appreciate that. That's April 16th after worship. Yes. Thank you. Are there other announcements? Then I invite you to bow your heads as you receive the blessing of God. Let the same mind be in all of you that was in Christ Jesus, who did not cling to his power or property, but emptied himself in the endless love of God, to whom he was obedient, even to death on a cross. Amen. And I invite you to sing with us our sending hymn, Go to Dark Gethsemane.
until he had ascended to the cross. Where will Jesus take us when we follow him? Go now to serve Jesus, the Savior who was born to God. I see to God. There's more comments if you want to turn in directions. I'm not able to hear the comments. I'll take my comments. We can put the jelly. Just got these. No brain I will try my best. I'm